All right, welcome back. It's a dash of pop. We've got some uh, good stuff going on. We had an awesome show last night with Dusty. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about uh, comics. Um, I'll be bringing my special guest Angel on here in just a few minutes. Um, but tonight we're going to be talking about uh, comics other than the big two, you know, DC and Marvel. We'll be talking about some of the other comic uh, companies that are out there. You got Image, you got Devil's Due. I think Devil's Due is no longer. I think that's part of Image now. But you got a lot of different other ones out there. So we'll be bringing on um, Angel here in just a minute. Just want to thank you all again for coming out tonight and and every night when you're watching the show, giving us uh, good feedback, giving us the likes, sharing, and whatnot. So I'm going to bring Angel. If you're out there, go ahead and shoot that invite out, and we'll get you on in just a minute. Um. Tonight we're gonna have we're gonna be having a, a show. Like I said, we'll be talking. Uh, we gotta have a show, but he's got to go watch uh, Black Widow tonight. So we'll get him on and then get him out so he can go see that movie. On here. Hopefully we have no problems. There we go. Hey, hey, hey. What's up, bud? What's going on, buddy? Good to see you again. Nah. Yeah, same here, dude. Just living life right now. So. Awesome. So you're going to go see Black Widow tonight? Is that what's on the uh, agenda? Yeah, it's on the agenda. Um, it's been 18 months, so we're, we're excited to watch Black Widow. Um, and uh, I even got, like, my little Marvel shirt going on, you know, a little Stark racing tonight. Right. So I'm, 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 I'm actually joining you in the Marvel. <laughs> I got Daredevil on. Very uh, nice. After I heard... After I heard a little, uh, I heard some uh, news that he might be not only when Spider-Man, but he's going to be in the new uh, Incredible or the She-Hulk. He might be joining the She-Hulk cast. So yeah, I had to give a little celebration out to to Daredevil. So I, yeah, we're going to go see uh, Snake Eyes. That's going to be the first movie we've seen in a while. Yeah, and you know in theater. So we're gonna. I'm, I'm excited about Snake Eyes coming out. So yeah, Snake. Eyes are you ready to talk? Snake Eyes looks really good. Um, and that yeah. is, that's one of those movies that's kind of like, it can be a hit or miss because of the last two movies that they did. But yeah. I'm excited to see how they do it. Um, I'm really excited to see, um, just, I mean, Snake Eyes is one of those comic book characters, you know, it's, it, right. um, it looks like a good cast. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I, yeah, I'm just, uh, excited for, I mean, Every every story is gonna have their changes and everything, but uh, this one, really, you know, of course, anything GI Joe, I don't care how bad it is, I am probably going to watch it numerous oh, yeah. times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it's but, those, uh, just it's just one of those. If you're a military guy and you just like stuff blowing up and just some really really <laughs> intricate uh, villains and and characters, GI Joe is that show to, that that show or comic book to read. It really yep. is. Um, even when Marvel had it, all the way to I can't remember. I think IDW has it now, or I, IDW has it now. Yeah. You well, yeah. It went. It went from Marvel to Devil's Due to Image. Yeah. Then to uh, uh, or I, Image to Devil's Due to I, to IDW, something like that. Yeah. But, yeah. So tonight we're going to be talking about some of those uh, those uh, new, uh, or I shouldn't say new, but some of the different uh, comic companies that are out there, like we just talked about. Um, you know, everybody's always heard about the big two. You got DC, you got Marvel, but some of the other ones have a lot better characters, I think. Um, we talked about some on the last one coming up with Spawn and, and Hellboy and things like that. So out of the out of the other comp out of the other companies, what which one do you find that you gravitate towards most? So when I was a kid, I used to read nothing but Marvel and DC. Like that was the pinnacle of, of comic books. Now, the older I've gotten, you know, uh, just turning 33 in July 4th and, uh, um, yep, ja happy birthday. <laughs> it's, um, and Jasmine and I watching Loki last night, um, Jasmine even said it last night. She goes, you know, I'm starting to like the villains more. Um, and, and, and it resonates because we're, we're obviously talking about this today. It resonates because you got to think about this, like, who has some of the best villains, but they're also almost anti-heroes and that's Image, IDW. Um, what I can appreciate about Image and IDW and all the other crazy comic book companies out there nowadays is that it's not just Marvel, okay, this is a, this is a comic book, put a stamp on it, done. DC, 
stamp on it, done. They send out yeah. DC, I think, for every Batman book, every two weeks comes out uh, Marvel, every Spider-Man book. There's almost a Spider-Man book, at least two Spider-Man books every week that comes out. Yeah. Image, IDW, um, Dark Horse, um, oh man, just, that's just naming a couple out of uh, probably another mm -hmm. 10 companies out there that do comic books. They tend to take their time with creating such a great story, such a great villain, such a great mm -hmm. hero, you know, and they give you that presence of, okay, we know you're setting this up now. And we know it's going to be 10 issues from now. We're not going to find out what the hell's going on. But it's great to set up the characters now and not just one character. They're setting up multiple characters in their story. And then when it gets to issue 50, it all pays off, you know. And so that's why yeah. I appreciate Image more because, and that's what I've been reading a lot more. Um, I just reread the Compendium of the Walking Dead again because I know the final season's coming up. Um, and just going back and rereading it. And it's just so intricate when you get to... Um, Negan and the governor, mm -hmm. you know, and everybody else, like all those just odd set villains. And you just, you, you feel for them because you're just like, you're a villain. But what Image did is they humanized the villain more than anybody else. So that's what I, that's why I appreciate it, like with Image. I think I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you on Image, especially with, since we're talking about The Walking Dead, they, they, you know, they took the chance of killing off characters you just, you know, you're going to, here you are, you know, one of my favorites in the comics was Rosita. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm just following, 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 and all of a sudden, wham, you know, yeah. when they meet the, 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 uh, the whispers, oh, there goes my favorite character. But I, I, I like that. I, I like it. I like a company that takes a chance to kill somebody off mm -hmm. and allows you to grow on to somebody else. And you're right. Need, I mean, I, I don't even, I mean, you can, you can agree or disagree with me on this. I mean, if the story, if Walking Dead was about Negan, we would think Rick's group were the villains. Right. No, 100%. If you, if you think about it that way, and that's what I, you're right, the humanized, and that's what I love about Negan. I mean, Negan did what he had to do to survive. Was he a jerk? Of course, but Rick's a jerk in some of the... Yeah in the other aspects but if you if you look at if you reread the walking dead and then you go back and rewatch the show obviously it's different from the, the comic book because oh, yeah. characters died and certain characters didn't that should have died in the com and, and that they did in the comic book and i know i get what robert kirkman was trying to do he was trying to create this whole different timeline you know um kind of like the multiverse and everything like that yep. um but if you reread it and you look at what the governor was trying to do you look at the governor and you look at Rick. Rick is just kind of a dick. He just goes in yeah. like, oh, well, you know, look, I'm, I'm, I'm a sheriff. Like, he's like, okay, cool. That's great. But that doesn't mean anything to the apocalyptic world anymore. You're dealing with these things called walkers or whatever they else called them in the, in the Walking Dead. You know, some, some groups called walkers. Some people called them uh, standees and uh, whatever yeah. it was. The governor was just really trying to save people's lives, you know, and try to help people. And there was rules, you know, he created rules and he created a, a way for everybody to live. The issue was is that you had the hero that everybody related to, like Rick and Glenn and everybody. And they were like, oh, that's the hero. We always got to pay attention. We've got to love the hero. But with The Walking Dead, it was like, no, dude, the governor was right. Negan was yeah. right. You know, like, think about it. Like, and it's the same thing like with the Joker when we talked last time about the Joker you relate today with the joker you're like yeah 100 percent. the joker is completely right the system flawed mm -hmm. everything's flawed we have to as a society has to come together you know and that's what i love about what image and, and and all those other companies do they're not just they don't take their formula from marvel and dc and they just keep going with it right. taking the same stuff they create whole new content and they make you side with both sides and understand both sides of the argument and you're okay well makes it, it, it broadens your horizon and and I feel like it makes you smarter, but it, yeah, it 100% broadens your horizon and makes you understand what the real outside world looks like today. Absolutely, yeah. What was your uh, what was your first? Uh, and we we taught you said you you gravitate towards image, but 
you know, when they first started coming out, what was the first the first one that you hit? Was it Image? Was it Dark Horse? Was it, you know, I mean, because for me it was Dark Horse because uh, at that time that's when uh, Star Wars got picked up, right? By Dark by Dark Horse, and I believe, uh, um, what was the other one that got picked up? I think GI. Well, yeah, it was GI Joe. They they did it too as well, but it was GI Joe Extreme and Sergeant Savage and that stuff. I wasn't a big fan of that, but Star Wars always or got taken, and that's where I went. Yeah. After, after that, but uh, what was the first one you gravitated towards? Um, I gravitated actually both towards Dark Horse and um, Top Cow because they were or and and Image. Sorry, because um, yeah. they were all around the same 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 time frame. And when you saw Star Wars yeah. being dropped by Marvel, and then Dark Horse comes and picks up Marvel, and you're like, I mean, uh, Star Wars, you're like, oh yes, we got new content. But then when you had Top Cow, and they were coming out with. Um, they were a, a sub company of image with the image boy how they used to call themselves and stuff like that and you had a, a comic book called witchblade which was just phenomenally awesome you know it's a like like their female version of um of spawn um, Spawn, stuff yeah. like that you had something like that it was really really cool um and then obviously image was my big thing uh, picking up spawn when it came out um and uh young blood or young bloods with um rob liefeld you know yeah. um so wildcat yeah wildcats uh jim lee you know so i mean there was a lot of great great books coming out during the 90s um that weren't marvel and dc and that was the i think that's what changed me a little bit away from marvel at times and dc because like i said it's all the same regurgitated stuff um yeah so yeah i i i, I was a big fan of of uh, spawn um uh i didn't I, i've got a few of like we talked about i got a few of his but uh, yeah, I mean, I think besides, uh, I mean, I don't even think we had any anti-heroes. I think Spawn was our first real true life anti-hero. And then again, you had people, I mean, I guess Deadpool, I'm, Deadpool wasn't really yeah. an anti-hero. At the Venom was more of an anti-hero yes. than anything else. And I mean, when, yeah. when I think that was the great thing about it was that when he did when, when uh, McFarlane did Venom, right, and then obviously they created the image, he wanted to do something different, and he created Spawn. But when you look at Spawn, he is a mixture of, like, he is a mixture of Venom. He's a mixture of, um, uh, like, just basically the devil. You know, he's yeah. so many other things that, that uh, Todd McFarlane did, and he created his own little thing. And what's the coolest thing about it was that he didn't just like create it to be like everybody else. He created an anti-hero that understood his consequences on his decisions that he made. And at the same time, he even created a, a anti-hero where back in the day, you know, back in the early nineties, you didn't have many African-American anti-heroes. It was either you're a hero or you're a villain. And so for him to come out and be like, Hey, I'm going to create this African-American anti-hero who was in the military, he gets just, he gets killed by his own people. And then he gets that chance to get his own revenge. But at the same time, he has to work for Satan, you know, <laughs> and, and then he has to work with this clown that's just a complete imbecile, you know, and oh, yeah. it's just, there's so many different factors. And, and I, that, I think that's one of the reasons I love Image because when you look at all the other comic book companies, they do all sorts of crazy stuff. But Image has taken a chance on so many great characters. But at the same time, for Image to be just themselves, not get bought out by anybody, create their own content, and for the creators to keep their own content, and you have one of those created own uh, comic books that's up to 300, issue 300, and I want to say 11 or 12 now. Yeah, 12, I think. And it, it's still going. It's still hot. It's still one of the hottest books out there. You know, it hasn't faltered like a lot of other comic books from the Marvel and DC because they just throw out stuff. That's where I can appreciate it with a lot of these small companies yeah. like Image and IDW. Um, even look at um, IDW when it came to um, Change Mutant Ninja Turtles. You know, yeah. that, I mean, yes, there's like five or six spinoffs. But when you have the book of The Last Ronin that's out, and I don't know if you had a chance to read that yet. But I, I, I read uh, I read the first one. Um, I'm waiting for the. Uh, I, I know a little bit about it. I it, it's but I've seen. Um, try not to spoil myself, but I have seen a few things. 
Yeah. Uh, what, yeah, yeah I, a great written book. Man, oh, what a fantastic. Was the, the end story of the turtles, you know, and everybody's yeah. just kind of like, oh, okay, whatever, like nobody cares. But that's what, that was their vision, you know, the way to end it, you know, and, and the finally, they have a chance after 30, almost 40 years to write the ending of it is phenomenal, you know. So I think that's what, that's what I like about it. it. You know, about a lot of these smaller companies, they take their chances, but they make sure their chances are going to be a, a single or a double or something, not just try to get the home run right off the bat, you know. I, I don't see a lot of, uh, you know, like, like DC will have the crisis and, and Marvel will have all the crossover events. I think I don't see a lot of that in the, in the smaller companies. And I think that's something that, keeps them going when you get so many crises and so many i've got to rehash and recharge and re restart over i think that hurts the two the big two where image id duck they might have shared universes with certain characters yeah. but they don't throw you into a big phenomenal event that you know this crowd might be on board with and this other crowd will no i'm not doing it that's i think that hurts sales at times now I'm, don't get me wrong there's some some great what the big two have done there's some great uh events but some of them are just like why you know yeah like so i remember when i was a kid we had you know you still had your infinity gauntlet trinity crusade you had um uh for dc it was the um oh my god what is it called why I'm crisis on infinite yeah, earth, crisis and, on and, earth and, and you had blackest day blackest night yeah uh, yeah you know and then obviously when we grew up we also had uh flashpoint you know but with those two companies, it's every four to six months, they're coming out with something new. And it's like, okay, cool. Why don't you build up to the story? Like give it two years to build up the story, yeah. you know, where image, they Im image has been around for what? 20 years now, 15 years, 15 mm -hmm. years. And they finally did a crossover and the book is called crossover. Yeah. I don't know if you read that one, but that one's actually pretty yeah. cool. It's literally showing you some characters from all these other comic books kind of just showing up, but it has nothing to do with the main character, really, you know? Yeah. Um, and so I think that's what's the funniest part is that it took them 15 years to do a crossover event, and they named the book Crossover, Cross and it has nothing to do with any other <laughs> <laughs> you know? And yeah. Kind of like a slap in the face to Marvel and DC, like, hey, look what we did. It, it only took us 15 years, you know? But I think that's what's cool about it is that you don't have to do these cra crazy crossover events. Um, and I know the cool thing right now, um, and I gotta go pick it up because I've already heard it's, it's awesome, um, is a book called uh, Sky, uh, uh, Skybound. And it's written by- Skybound, yeah, I've heard of it. I haven't seen it out or anything, but- Yeah, so it's written by Robert Kirkman uh, who did The Walking Dead. And uh, the funny story about Robert Kirkman, he sold The Walking Dead to Image. He told him, oh, yeah, by like issue five, you're going to find out that it's not just zombies. Aliens came down and infected the humans <laughs> and created zombies. And they're like, oh, yeah, sold. Well, obviously, we got to almost 200 issues. And they're like, where the fuck? Where's the aliens? And it's like, oh, yeah, I like, it. you know. But during issue 100, the idea that Rick kind of survives and he's picked up by aliens. Yeah. So now you have like this character that's kind of like Rick that's picked up the, by aliens in The Walking Dead and you have Skybound and he's dealing with aliens in space. So yeah. one of those like, okay, well, cool. Now you're making this alien story. All right, cool. You know, like hopefully we'll see zombies in this one, you know, and not have a hundred and some odd issues. I'm like, oh yeah, the zombies had nothing to do with this. Um, yeah. But I think that's what's great. Um, and I think what's cool about the, a lot of the younger, uh, a lot of these younger companies is that they've given like Robert Kirkman a, a big, like, hey, keep doing what you plan. You know, you're doing, you're doing great. You know, yeah. um, so that's why I, that's why I love Image. <laughs> image is just yeah. I, 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 my biggest fear is, and 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 I guess it shouldn't be anymore. But yeah, my biggest fear was them being bought out, especially when they, you know, because we lost you had vertigo and you had wild storm they got bought out by dc and then you, again you had malibu and they got bought out by marvel yeah and i'm always just like leave image because i don't you know i don't want i don't want to see superman go in and you know unless it's a, a joint you know image dc they finally want to say oh we'll do something 
fine. But I don't want to see Mar you know, Superman or Captain America go take on zombies and right. And I don't want to see him now. Um, I mean, we've had Captain I like take on zombies, which is really cool. If anybody wants to read it, it's called Marvel Zombies, a phenomenal, yeah, that's a crazy great, book. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't want to see zombies from The Walking Dead. You know what I mean? Like, no. So, uh, what do you think of another one I like is uh, is The Boys. Um, I know the TV shows out there, but man, what a fantastically written uh, book that was. I mean, just taking what we loved as yeah. our big seven from Avengers and or the, the yeah. uh, Justice League and just making them assholes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, it, there's no kid friendly way of putting it. They, I think that's what, that's what brings um, image and everybody else around is like we said, they, they make they flip the script on the hero and they make the hero look like a complete asshole and then you have somebody like billy the butcher coming in and it's just like what if uh, what if we can get a spank the stoops on their butts and it's like what you know like that's issue one like what uh oh okay uh you know and i mean obviously you still have your love interests b between um between any characters and stuff like that like you have in the boys Boys. but like when you when you got this 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 Scottish guy is just like, I want to kill Soups, you know? And you're like, okay. But then when you find out why he wants to kill Soups, you tend to relate because he's the villain. He, he is the villain when you first see it. But then when you hear the bad story and hear what happened, you're like, maybe he is actually the hero and the superheroes are, are he is, the villain, yeah. you know? And it's the same thing like um, Invincible that I had on TV a minute ago, you know? Um, Invincible is the same. Fantastic. You, yeah, fantastic show, fantastic read. When you're reading it and you're watching it, you're like, okay, well, maybe Omni Man is kind of a dick, you know? Um, everybody else was <laughs> kind of right, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's that's what I love about these these companies is that they, like I said, they flip the script on the hero and you have to think, who do you, it's not about siding with who, but it makes you think of, can I relate to these characters more than just, oh, got Scott, you know, you got Scott Lang over here, which a lot of people can relate to him, but like Captain America, I can't, I, I can relate to him because I was in the military, but I really can't relate to him. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm a superhero, you know, and stuff like that. I can probably relate to if something happened to my wife and kids. I can probably go down the rabbit hole like Billy the Butcher now, you know what I mean? You Absolutely. Know, types of characters. So. What is, uh, what is something that these, other the small the smaller companies that we're talking about that you wish the big two would do besides we know we know about you know besides giving the us more big crossovers um i would say to not i i get it profits are big pro, pro, you got when you had warner brothers buy out dc and then now you have disney that bought out marvel a couple years ago oh my god my, kid, my kids are in here um <laughs> When you got them um, buying out these companies and you have Image sitting here just going, hey, like, look, this is what we got going, you know. Um, I think what they have to do is not just rely just on the profits and understand, like, oh, yeah, we're going to throw out 100,000 books of Spider-Man number one, you know. Um, and, and, and I can tell you this right now, uh, June 21st, there is going to be a new thing, and it's going to be huge. It's going to destroy markets. And the reason why is because Miles Morales, I'll just give the spoiler now, Miles Morales is going to end up being the new Captain America, but because he's yeah. uh, black and Puerto Rican, the suit in the front is going to have more of a Puerto Rican flag than just the Captain, like Captain America flag. And I know that's going to go, people are going to lose their minds about it and everything like that. And you're going to have people on you know, political spectrums and losing their minds about it. But we also know that they're going to throw that book out so fast. You're going to have that yeah. book at least five five times over you know and i get it you want the money you you need the money because of the pandemic and everything like that but you need to focus on the stories and that's yeah. what i love about the walking dead the walking dead only did a hundred and some odd issues and yeah it took them 13 years to finish it out you know but they also took breaks during, during it um there's a book i'm reading right now called uh redneck and it's right, written by Kirkman also. And Kirkman's been working on that book now for five years, I believe. Five years. And oh, wow. there's only 20 issues. 
So that tells you, that shows you like, yeah, he's working on a lot of stuff, but at the same time, he's also creating a story that's so well put together. And it's about redneck vampires and it's funny as hell. <laughs> it's just that he's putting the story together and he's operating at this pace that people are like, okay, I want more from this. You know, I don't want just like issue after issue after issue after issue. And I got four issues a month. You know, I want an issue once every couple of months. A couple of months, yeah. They're not worried about just all that type of money coming in. Um, and the other thing, I get, I get the idea of doing spinoffs and stuff. It's great. But look at, look at Deadpool and Harley Quinn. For the past yeah. five, six years, Deadpool and Harley Quinn were on everything. Now no one can stomach it. Um, yeah. And now that you have Spider-Man in the MCU, Spider-Man is on everything. Everything, yeah. And I agree. That's what kills it. I would like to see them do some more original. I don't, you know, I don't, I, I'm not, I, I don't care if they change people who are putting on the mantles and things like that, but I really would like to see some original characters, some new, I mean, you know, man, it's 2021. You can give us something new. You can give us, you know, yeah. and some new characters out there and, and, and it would be great. Uh, my wife is putting a big old light in my face. So if, I can't see you. It's fine. Uh, but no, I, I think that's my biggest thing is I want to see some, some originality. I mean, stop. I mean, I, I'm okay with, like you said, I'm okay with Miles Morales taking up the, the cap mantle. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I'm getting, I, I wanted to see the, the, the get to, I haven't got any of the issues yet, but we're uh, Steve and, and, and them go walking through America and seeing all the different caps that are, taking up the mantle mm -hmm. and I'm fine with that, but I want something original. I want something new from the two, big two. Like we get, we get something, we get really good original characters. Like I know Omni man's a, you know, a Superman just in a bad way, but he was original in, in, in the aspect of how they did him. And I guess I want to see more of that from the, the bigger companies, but uh, I think that's what kills Marvel yep. and DC is they try to play it safe so much. Um, they're like, hey, this works. So let's go ahead and flip Captain America every five or six years. And then we'll yeah. back to Steve for five or six years. And we'll give it to Jerry Devil in five or six years. They just keep flipping it. You know, it's cool and all. But at the end of the day, like like you said, I would rather see new things. And that's, that's what I love about the about all these other companies like Aspen and um, Image and IDW. They create new content and they... If they fail, they fail. Sometimes some of these guys failed falling forward, you know, and they end up, they, they, they might have failed, but at the same time, they turn around and go, oh, wait, I actually could have gone this route. Let me go ahead and change something with this. All right, and now I got a multi-million dollar book up down the road, you know, yeah. um, and, and that's what that's what's the cool thing about them is that if they fail, like I said, they fail, but they're going to kill it the next book around where Marvel's like, we don't want to fail. DC is like, we don't want to fail. So what we're going to do is we're just going to gender swap it or we're going to uh, race swap it or we're just, uh, uh, what's the other one? Um, uh, uh, disability swap it, you know, and it's just like, I get it. We get it. We, you, but we, we as a society, we need more original dis disabled villains or, or, um, heroes more more lgbtt heroes original stuff not okay now uh superman's gay and it's like dude yeah i'm like come on let, let's think of something new and i think yeah. that's what's killing a lot of readers is like you know whenever whenever we create a character that we've known and love and we turn around and be like okay well captain america is now gay and it's like dude he's been straight for 80 years and now he's gay all of a sudden like yeah why couldn't we create something new yeah, I, to satisf satisfy the LGBTQ community, but at the same time satisfy the comic book community and say, hey, we create this whole new character yeah. has nothing to do with all the other crazy people, you know, and we'll just go from there. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I just, I wish that, uh, I wish they would tend, like we talked about do more of that I, I i totally agree um what is your what is your favorite right now what is it what is it that you uh that you're reading you talked walking dead but like if if like i'm going uh i'm going back again kind of old i like preacher yeah i love garth ennis's run on preacher uh you know and it, it finally ended but man, i 
I, I had never, I mean, I'd seen it out, never really thought about it. It wasn't until it came out on the TV, but it was like the, the TV show, but man, I really enjoy. Um, so I went back and read all of those, man. What a, like you, cause it, it made me think of that when you were talking about redneck vampires on, you know, and that's basically <laughs> what made me think of, but that was a well-written another. Yeah. Man, um, what a great. One of my biggest things right now, um, and I'm excited for the show to come out, so I started rereading it again, is uh, Sandman. Sandman is just one of those books, um, like I said again, like it's filled with villains. They're yeah, all gaming. villains, you know, it doesn't matter how you look at it. And then you have Lu Lucifer kind of just sitting there just like, hey, I'm not really this bad kind of guy. <laughs> Everyone says I am, you know. <laughs> Um, and that's what I love about that book. Lucifer, um, I've been rereading. Um, what else was there? I'm kind of been rereading again. Uh, I just, re like I said, I just reread The Walking Dead. Just reread um, Invincible again. Um, yep. I've been kind of rereading whenever I get a chance. I just, just sit down and just kind of reread it again. And spawn at times. Because, I mean, you have 300 issues, you know. But, um, yeah. and then um, American Gods. Yeah, it was a book. Then it got into a TV show, and then they made a comic book from it. Um, but American Gods is one of those, um, one of those books, kind of like The Watchmen. You know, it's it's one of those books you just kind of kind of read it, you know. Um, and then um, uh, I don't know if you've seen it, uh, Good Old Omens. Um, Good Omens. Good Omens. Yeah. Neil Gaiman, Neil Neil Gaiman and Pratchett killed it. Genius. Yeah. Yeah. Genius. Um, and and whatever book they touched, they were killing it. You know, because they like I said, they took their time creating this this whole universe and yeah it may have only issued like only lasted a book you know or it lasted you know 50 issues but man like you think about it i would rather have something that's well written for 50 issues than something that's just crap and it lasted 800 100 you know, yeah. or a thousand issues like i'm like i just i'd rather i'd rather have the time to be there and be like i'd rather read those 50 issues any day of the week you know so uh those are the ones i've been rereading now um and they're just they're just great books they're just fantastic stories right. characters um and you can resonate and and feel for these characters the villain or the hero yeah i mean and i mean it all boils down to the the uh the humanization that you get throughout all these other ones i i don't know what the other big two were doing or what they were thinking but yeah um, the humanization is what I love. And I think that's what draws me to those new ones now, like, uh, even IDW and, and the, and the GI Joe that they're doing right now, you get a little bit of, uh, you know, humanization, even from Cobra and the, and, 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 and the bad guys. They're not, it's not just, I'm trying to dominate the world and everything. There's, there's methods. I mean, and I know Marvel did that at first, but Larry Hama was fantastic when yeah. he wrote those and, and, and you know, and, but uh, yeah, that's what I want to see more of. I want to see more that we can relate to and still have superpowers you know, yeah. on some. But um, and I think that's a great thing because like we were just talking about now is like, you know, I think that's what it is, is that Marvel, like we said, only care, Marvel, DC only care about that money. You know, they care about the money. They, they, they want the writers to just keep putting out books. But then when you have writers like Donny Cates, who did, mm -hmm. created, uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider did um, all these crazy things the last five years with Marvel. And now he's just like, you know, I'm burnt out with Marvel, man. They got me writing five, six thousand books at a time. I can't do it. I can't breathe. And then Image is like, come over here. Come on and over. then he comes to Image and they're just like, write whatever book you want. Take as long as you want. Don't care. Just as long as you tell us, hey, I've got this issue done. Push it out. You know, give us a date for what issue and we'll push it out. As long as you're, you make the date that you've set for yourself. And now Donny Cates is writing for, for Image, and he's just like, dude, I'm enjoying life, man. I'm loving it. Yeah. Same with Robert Kirkman. Same with everybody else that just literally just turned around and was like, all right, guys, I got to go somewhere else. You know, I got to do something different. And it's just like, holy crap, you know. So I think that's what, what happened in the 90s is that all these writers, like we saw the mass exodus of um, uh, Mark Silvestri, you know, the Image Boys, they all left. Yep creating image and now all these writers today are just like i can't i can't keep writing 17 books for you in, in one month you know i yeah. i gotta go do something else and they go to these lesser guys and they're dude why would you want man i don't care you know 
I mean, Archie Comics just let Rob Reifeld write a book called The Shield. Don't know what it's about, but he's writing books for Archie Comics because it's just like, you want to write a book? Here, write whatever you want, dude. And he made like his own kind of Captain America like person, you know? Yeah, he's yeah. On feet, but it's like a Captain America. Kind of, and he was saying it took me about four months to write this, you know? So I would rather, like I said, I'd rather see well written books than just pushed out stuff that makes no sense. Yeah, yeah. I think they're they're trying to overload the market and saturate the market where you get. And that's what it is. I, I think you get. Like you said, you nailed it right on the head. You get good, well-written, thought-out stories that you're not being forced. 17 Batmans, 22 yeah. Spider-Man, whatever the case may be. What is it? What would you like to see that hasn't been a comic, but something that you would like to see in comic form? I can't give away, I can't give away my secrets, bro. No. Um, <laughs> I would like to see something along the lines of just – it's so hard because there's been really just a lot of great books out there that have kind of like, you're like, Oh man, that's a great book. I can't, no one can top that, you know? Um, but I would like to see more comic books run the line of like the boys. Yeah. Um, where it's average citizens turning around and telling the superheroes, Hey, you need to take, um, you need to have consequences for the things that you've done. You know, we've seen it in mm. movies. You've seen New York, 17 blocks in New York destroyed by the Chachari, you know, and then it didn't happen until like what? Captain America Civil War, like almost five years later. Okay, now we're going to have you guys be responsible for what you did. And it's like, yeah. come on, you, what? You know, um, I would like to see more of those consequential decisions like oh yeah i'm a superhero i blew up half of chicago okay the next issue goes okay like hey man you're gonna have to deal with this type of shit you know and i think that's where image comes in and they do those types of things more um but i would like to see more writers not be subjected by society to take and to do what society wants them to take and do um yeah because a lot of these writers get pressured into, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to make this person, this person, and it's like, nah, man, just let it, just let it be what it is. Um, and I think you have a lot of those writers that are willing to do it. I think it's just the companies that don't want to let them do it. And so, I, absolutely, when it comes to writing, just let the writers write, just let the writers write, you know. Um, and I think that's what I appreciate about the golden age and the silver age and the bronze age is that they let the writers write and just had fun with it, you know, and uh, now it's too political uh, times with certain books. Um, but I mean, if I was to write a book myself, I feel like there isn't that many like actual like hero, hero books, you know, it's all superheroes. And so yeah. more of those, like just more hero, American hero stories, you know, even if it's just a military guy dealing with day-to-day -day shit goes on like maybe like seven issue arc of him on deployment then he comes back and then he has to deal with his life back at home type of thing yeah maybe i'll start writing something like that i don't know um but i mean that'd be a great that would be a great read people can actually understand like the mental health of us you know that the stuff that we have to deal with you know coming home that was yeah that's what i was kind of like the long line i'd like to see something heroish but true to life and i you man you nailed it another one that i would like to see uh is and i i'm gonna take it back to my uh lord of the rings but i'd like to see something along that lines a, a, a lot longer fantasy you know we get the superheroes i you know we had some conans and you still get some of those and everything but i'd like to see a long-running fantasy where you get to see the world build up and they're they're uh taking it through and yeah, you, you get the other ones every once in a while. You get Witcher. I get it. Witcher, Dungeons and Dragons, some of those things, they're out there. But I want to see something we're good so far there. just everyday, everyday fantasy yeah. style like that. Yeah. Yeah, it would be, I think. Me <laughs> My wife's too excited. She's like, I'm going to do theater now. Um, <laughs> but um, no, I was like, I mean, even if, even if they did The Witcher in a comic book, I would love to see that. I think that would be phenomenal just to see them do like, but that's the thing. 
actually take it from the source of the book and just go page for page. Okay, cool. How do we make this into a comic book, you know, and have your visual arts team out there and then have a good writer, not just like whoever, you know, and just have a really good writer that's going to literally decipher the stuff, the book, the material and make it into a comic book form. I think that'd be a phenomenal book. That book would uh, sell so crazy, you know? Yeah, I agree. Are you, I guess you got to get ready to start heading towards that, uh, that movie theater. Oh, so tell me, I, um, you're there. <laughs> <laughs> it's only right. To so I will set, we'll set up another, yeah. uh, another show and, 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 and we'll keep going. Um, we'll pick back up on something else, but as always, I appreciate yeah. our, our chats together, two comic book nerds, just getting to enjoy each other. So, um, appreciate you coming back on brother. Thanks. Have a good one guys. All right, buddy. Have, enjoy the movie. Oh, I will. <laughs> All right. But Bye. Thanks, guys, for coming out, watching comic books again. Uh, Angel, as always, it's a, it's a pleasure to, to listen to your knowledge. Um, so uh, come out and see us. I love doing these shows. If there's, a, if there's a certain, you know, type of pop culture thing you want to see, let us know. Shoot it in the – shoot it out in the, uh, the comments or give me a private message. If you want to see a certain show on something, we'll get it done. So I appreciate every one of you coming out tonight and watching. So uh, again, like I always say, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Take care of one another, love one another, and I'll see you on the next show.